everybody, it's Sam at Mix.Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. Excuse the noise, it has just decided to... Can you...? <laughs> it is absolutely hammering it down with rain. There is snow on the moors and it is freezing cold outside. So I have been waiting and waiting, but it just doesn't seem to be, you know, easing. So I'm just going to have to carry on. So if you do hear anything, it's the bad weather outside. Anyway, I'm nice and warm inside and I am going to be showing you how to make this really very cute concertina backpack. Now I made a backpack, I've made two or three now on the channel. They're always really popular and I've been requested a lot last year to do another one. So it's high up on my list of requests for this year, so I thought I would share this one. You, some of you might recognise this part here. This is from a die set, but it's very easy to do, and I'll give you the measurements of all these pieces. You'll easily be able to do it without those dies. But they are nice to add on to your own size. And uh, yeah, I really love I love the side of it. I think that, that's obviously the main part for me, is just that concertina style. But also the back, I mean, obviously you wouldn't probably be able to get that on if it was a real backpack like that. It's more almost like crossover the front of your body, but I just think it looked nice. So if you want to do them the proper way, then look at my backpack playlist up here and you'll be able to see my very popular one where they go across one that side and one that side. So if you wanted to, you, well, you could put it on like maybe a teddy bear or something, but um, I just thought I'd do it a little bit different. So I always like to keep each tutorial, you know, um, different. And then with this one here, they just, come out of their little slots there. You open it up and you've got that nice kind of expanding side there. Lots of room inside of it. Obviously you can, the width is, you know, that half inch. If you wanted, if you knew that you had something much bigger going in here, then obviously that concertina would come out and your lid could come out further and then fold down. So you would have to play around with your measurements. But for what I need this for, this size is perfect. And obviously my glue is not set properly because that one's just come off, but we'll just pretend that's still there. And then this here is actually a birthday um, badge that I had for my birthday. And I thought I'm gonna reuse it and the colors work perfectly with this one. And then I've just put a little tassel, a little bit of fun on there as well. But uh, yeah, let me show you how to make it. Okay, so that's the dies that I use. They're from the Versatile Backpack Gift Bag by Simply Made Crafts. I think it's still available. I know it did sell out, but they do you know, when they sell it, they do kind of get the stuff back in again. So um, I'll check, and again, the links will be shared below if they're still available. But the buckle, you can see, they look brilliant. They really do look really nice. And you can use them on all sorts. You know, I use the buckles for a Father Christmas belt, and you've got a little passport, you've got a pen, you've got all sorts. But this makes your backpack, and again, that'll be in that playlist for those of you that maybe have this die and maybe missed that one. So I've gone ahead and die cut all the bits I need. Now the papers I'm using are from this lovely pad, which I picked up recently from the range. It was 2 dollars it's called Happy, and they're just really nice, happy colours. So it was nice to have something new because um, I was getting a bit bored of what I had. So let me grab all the bits you need. Um, also, I'm using these beautiful faceted little embellishments. You just need to add your hot glue or like a glue dot on the back of them because they come without the adhesive. So I've got my hot glue gun on and now I can't pick them up, but I'll just pop them to one side and then I've gone and die cut those bits. But I'll give you the measurements for those because it's very easy to cut. Like I said, you don't need the die, but it is a nice little, um, you know, extra touch with the uh, detail there. Okay, so you want two pieces that are seven by 12. So the bag actually uses two pieces of 12 by 12. But what I would say is you want something that's double sided because this piece here and this piece, you can see there, there's your 12 by 12. So I've cut it so that it's seven by 12 and you want two pieces of that size and you want to score it four inches along the long side, fold and burnish. Then the reverse side I've then used, so this will be your five by 12, but I flip it over and that is what I'm gonna have as the side detail. So you'll see on this one, this was the back side of this yellow. Okay, so when I open it, if you look inside there, you can see the yellow then against the blue. And I just think it's a really nice way to use your, you know, double-sided papers. Not all packs have good double sides. Some of them, are they just clash and they don't go at all. But there's some really nice ones in this pad. So, the, um, yeah, it was, it's nice to be able to use them. So, yeah, two pieces of 12 by 12. But also, if you don't want to have your sides different, then you can keep it as one piece. All right. 
So with this piece here, two pieces like I said, 5 by 12 and along the 12 inch side you want to score at 4, okay, and then rotate it back and then along the 5 inch side you want to score at half an inch and 4 and a half all the way down but then you want to score every half, half an inch after that just to that first line here. So you want to score then at one inch, just down to that score line, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, and four. Yeah, that's the last one because you've already done your four and a half which will be all the way down. So you can just make them out there. You'll see all my score lines are just to that one there, which is that one that you scored at four along the long side. Okay. So fold and burnish, but with this one here, the folding's a little bit different. So I'm going to fold along that one and fold down those two that you can score all the way down. Okay. And then just to help with the um, folding of the concertina parts, if you cut up from the bottom, so there's all the concertina score lines, you, you, you're working on that bottom piece, just cut up to that score line there and then just cut straight along here. Now you can cut them on an angle if you want, I'm going to have to because I was just in the normal mode of making tabs which usually we hide and therefore we cut little notches on them and things like that but for this one because it's decorative, i.e. Um, I know you don't do it on the back, you only do it on, oh actually, yeah, that's a point, I can have that on the back because you won't actually see them, so it's fine, keep them straight, can you see there, they're just straight, because I actually have them as a, a feature, you can actually see them, that's optional, if you want to hide them, because on the back you actually do it the normal way, so the tabs are inside, so if you want it to look like this, then that's fine, I'm going to show you that anyway, but I do like that detail on the front, so it's entirely up to you, but I just remembered, yeah, so that one, Mind you though, I've done it on both, so I'm going to have to cut mine. So it will all come clear. Some of you might be thinking, I don't know what you're on about, Sam, but in a minute you'll notice what I'm talking about. I might end up putting both of mine underneath, actually, now saying that, because I don't think I like them on a, an angle. Not for this, anyway. I think I prefer them straight. So anyway, that's what you want there. And then you want to start concertina folding. So you already have a mountain here, because that's the tab. So the next one needs to be a valley. But you want to just kind of go down... Well, as far as you can without obviously, you know, ripping anything. And then do, you know, your mountain, valley. And just take some time, you know, don't, like I said, don't, you don't need to fold them all the way down. And you'll notice that you want it to have a little bit of a rock. You see mine just rocks a little bit? Because when we stick it together, you'll get a natural curve here. You can see it along the bottom there. So... Again, that's all, you know, supposed to happen. But you can see that I'm just pinching down all of those score lines and go underneath. I mean, if you wanted to, you could fold all the way down um, because that's gonna, all going to be hidden, you know, it's your tab. But you just have to kind of just work with it, just manipulate it each way until you've got all those folds in place. Um, that one needs to be a valley. This is the fiddliest part. Everything else is very, very straightforward. But you'll see now, and then those will end. So that's what you want, all right? So you have a mountain. Yeah, start with a mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley, and end with a mountain. One, two, three, four, five mountains you should have, okay? And then that's going to go under and you can see already that there's a slight curve just ever so, ever so slightly but that's what you will have so I've already done it on that one and just prise them back apart again because it will make it easier to fold everything um, together also for the handles I'm using like scraps I'm going to use that side because it's got the same it's all from that same paper pad so the turquoise is the same but this is two pieces of 12 by one okay and then for the lid this is a piece of five by seven and along the five inch side I've scored at half an inch and one. But obviously if you want yours to be wider, you need that half inch because that's your tab, that's how you're going to stick your lid down. But you might then want to do your score line at two and a half, so then that gives you a two inch width that the, the concertina fold can come open. Come open? Can be open. So two and a half and then the score line would be here and come down the side. 
okay? You might just want to keep it curved and don't score at all and just curl the, you know, if you put a, you know, go like that with your bone folder and just curl the whole lid so then you can kind of almost have it as an expanding one. So have a play around. Um, I always say if people are new to this kind of stuff, use some, maybe you've got some 12 by 12 paper that you don't particularly like. Maybe, um, you know, you've got um, just like some scraps that you use to do your kind of first go and then you can see if you want to change it but that's what you want to have all right if you want to round off the edges and things like that you can do as well and also I haven't cut my piece but you want a little bit for the handle and this is uh, oh wow five eighths of an inch by roughly we're looking at what's that three and a half so six seven and then half so eight yeah so I do well you could do three quarters by eight or five eighths of an inch by eight, but I will cut mine in a bit. So get rid of the scoreboard. Now we just need to stick it all together. Okay, so you need to kind of do it bit by bit. Now this is when it's up to you. So if you want to have your tabs showing, then you would stick it outside and you will put glue under here. But I actually think I'm going to do this underneath. This is much, much busier. Stripes and flowers do work well together, but I think just right on top of each other like that. I'm not sure if I like it so much. Um, whereas I think I'm gonna prefer this one like that. Whereas, I don't know, cause they're such block colors. Um, it's a bit different. So yeah, so it's up to you. You either put your glue on the outside or the underside, just depending on how, you know, you want it to be seen. So I'm just gonna grab my glue. And plus it's a good way to show you how they look. Cause I've done one obviously that way. And then the other one I'm doing this way. So just, Pop your glue along that tab and then just line up. Make sure you get your base score line lined up. That's the most important one. You can always trim the top. Just bring it around make sure it all folds in, which it does. So I know everything's lined up there. So do that one. And then we're going to do the back last because you need to add the handle. So then you want to go and stick this side. All right, so we'll work all on the front first. Usually you work your way around, but it's slightly different with this one. To, oh, I need to do this one here. You need to cut a wedge off the bottom as well. Totally forgot because I was too busy talking about the side. So just take a little bit off there. I'd already done that one. These are now going to both stick inside like so. And we're going to bring that all up. So I'm going to add some glue on both of these sides and stick them in. So just bring it up and bring that one around. Bring it up and you can just go in there and just stick everything down. Because this is the back one, this one is going to stick inside on the top there. So and cover all of that and make the inside really neat. But what we want to do before we stick all this in is we need to prepare our handles. So again, just make sure that's all where it needs to be. You've got a nice right angle, everything's nice and neat at the front. So I'm going to keep that to one side and grab your handles. Just go over with the bone folder just so you can put a curl in them. It will just help, you know, you get that look. So it's up to you now how you want to do it. So we'll pretend just so you can give you a few options. So we'll pretend that's in there. So if you wanted to, you could put your handle in like this and you could go in the base. Okay, you could have one there and then another one next to it. If you wanted to do... I won't be able to hold them both in place, but I think you can get what I mean. So there'd be something, obviously a little bit further apart, but something like that. That's, you know, you get backpacks like that. But I like to do them from the inside there and then in the side here, okay? So, or you can cross them over. So you'll have this one going over this side and then the next one going over that side, which will give you that effect. So there's loads of ways that you can do this. You might opt to not do them at all and just have the top little loop there um, and keep it at that. You know, you might want to just put a handle on the top. It's entirely up to you. So what I would say first of all is we're going to glue all of the bottom of this in place. So I'm going to pop that in there. And again, just give that a minute to stick. You want that to be nice and secure. Okay, so now we want to decide, you know, where you want your handles coming down. I'm going to have mine 
because you have to do the sides first and then the top we will do when we put the lid in. So it's, there are a few steps to this, just like my other one, but the results are really nice when it's done. So what you want to do is just, you don't need to score anything, you just want to put a little like, you know, crease in it. It doesn't really matter too much about the angle in that sense you just want to you want to do an angle but whatever you do on this one it needs to be the same on the other so you can see I've just folded across there so that is one and a quarter so then on this one because now what's going to happen is that can go in there and it will fold you see there and go up Ooh. like so okay so it gives us that handle so this one you want it to be on the opposite so you'll see there so that that fold that height there is one and a quarter so on this side again one and a quarter so I'm just going to grab a little pencil just pop a little marker there and then on this one I want to fold across that way so now if I bring it up you see what I've done got the opposite so, you know, you might come up one inch, you might come up one and a half, but whatever you do, make sure they're the same on both sides. Okay, then you want to add your glue to the underside of that triangle. Oh! <laughs> I was squeezing that so hard, I was like, I think there's more air in here than there is glue. And look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm going to save that because this is good glue. Let's pop a bit on there and hopefully it will, you know, give me time to... Uh, it won't dry too fast. There we go. Oh my gosh, I'm going to leave that in. Right, so now you're going to go in with the point right down to the bottom of the bag there and just fold that across the fold. More than enough glue on there. Might take a little bit longer to grab now because there's so much glue on there. But if I just go in from the underside, can you see how it should look? So just following the, you know, the, um, the fold that you've done. So point right down to the very bottom of the bag and then just bring the rest over. This is if you want to do fiddly handles like me but I think that's what makes it a really cool project. You know those backpack handles is what brings it all together. So now you have something like that. And this is then when you can decide if you want them to cross over because they do look, I think they look quite cool like so. In fact I'm going to do it again on this one but if you don't want to keep them like that and then you'll have that that effect. So it's entirely up to you how you do these. You'll see there they kind of go off on an on an angle, they point you know outwards when you go over that way. That's just to keep that curve kind of going the way it should. Alright. So but I am going to do that one again like so. So what I need to do, see that's they come down quite far inside and you've only got your half inch tab there. So if I stick that on you're going to have it sticking out underneath. So once you're kind of happy where they are, I'm going to take a bit off. You have to judge that yourself, but you know what you know. You know what you kind of need to do. Now, when I stick that in, yeah, it's not going to overhang. It's going to all be hidden underneath that tab. So you want to stick these down next. So again, do this one first. I'm going to pop a little bit of glue, hopefully. Yeah, there's, there's literally nothing left. I must have had such a big air bubble inside. So that one's going to go there. Just make sure, you know, you're coming in about the same. So what have I got there? One and a half. One and a half. Like so. And then look, you can see where they are on the back side there. All right, so it's a, it's a funny one to try and explain. It's best for you to just watch what I do and then, you know, you can recreate yours because you're all going to be slightly different and everybody's going to probably do their handles slightly different. So, um, yeah, by doing it that way, I think you've got lots of options. So now, um, you can do the handle last. We'll get these side pieces stuck down and in place. I'm just going to run some glue just down each of these tabs. Do them both at the same time or one at a time, it's up to you. You might just have to feed that one in a little bit more. Just bring that all down and it should all line up. And that will help 
strengthen this bottom part of the um, handle as well because it's going to be sandwiched between the two. I'm just going to just hold that in place for a minute while that glue dries. Okay, so the back's all stuck down and now you can start reworking those concertina folds. Just on each side, just kind of refold them again, really give them a good squeeze. You can go quite far down, like so. And you'll see now you start to get this arch and they will stay in place. It's really cool, love it. Okay, then we just need to stick this down. So we're gonna run glue on the inside and this is going to sandwich in between your tops of your handles there. You might need to take a little wedge off if it's not gonna go in. Yeah, it's gonna buckle a little bit, this one. So I'm just gonna take just a slight little bit off of just both those ends there. Oh, try that one again. And then it will fit in perfectly. So you're going down to that score line, see there? And that top piece will be like that and everything will all line up like so. Okay, so again, run some glue along here and just stick that one in. Okay, just remembered, I've stuck this down, but my glue's still tacky. You've got to put your little handle in. Can't miss my handle. So I'm going to use this bit of pink here. That's a good thing with that colour, as it does give you some time. So I'm going to do, I'll just say it was five eighths of an inch. So we'll go about, it doesn't matter, we'll go about there. I think mine might be, yeah, mine's about eight. <laughs> and then again, just curve that. I thought it was missing something. I was like, oh no. And then I'm going to add a bit of glue to both sides just for good measure. Just cover about half an inch. And you want it so that your thumbs are on top, bring it around so your thumbs are still both facing you and on top and then you know you've got it the right way. And then, so you want to stick this in first. I'm just going to prise this open, slot those two in. Just got away with it. It's up to you where you have them. In fact, I might bring mine a bit closer together. So it's more in the middle of those pieces there. But again, entirely up to you. And like I said, not everybody's going to have these anyway or want to use them. So but I'm quite happy with that there. So remembering all the steps. It's all right when you're watching the tutorial because I've got, I'm there telling you. But when you forget when you're doing the tutorial. <laughs> Okay, so that's still got a bit of drying time, but now we can start decorating the front. Okay, so some of you may have the Simply Made Crafts die, and some of you might go and look at my other tutorial, because you may have missed it, so it was about two, two and a half years ago now. But on that one, I do a big pocket on the front, I do pockets on the side, but obviously this has got a fold on it, so you can't add pockets there. But I'm keeping this one plain because of this time, the way that I'm, you know, using these. So. I've gone ahead and cut two of these, but I've also reinforced them by cutting two again in the 300 GSM white cardstock, just to really strengthen them. And then you've got two of these, which are gonna be this detail here. And then these tiny ones, I've got two of them. So I'm gonna give you the measurements of these so you can cut something similar. So these measure three quarters of an inch by five, so two, but like I said, you might wanna reinforce. And then these are just over half an inch. You want to, I do five eighths of an inch by one and three quarters, two of those. And then these tiny pieces are a quarter of an inch by, I do one and a quarter. And again, you want two of them, all reinforced, okay? Then I've got these bits here. I'm gonna stick these on first, just while I've got everything flat. Now these ones here, you would have to, maybe you've got a square die that you could do one and then cut it again with a smaller die inside but you're looking at it's just over one by, yeah. I think one by one would be two. You're better off doing one and one eighth squared or one and a quarter squared, but you need to cut that other hole in the middle. It has to be big enough for this to go through because that's going to go like so. It's a decorative piece, but you, you, know, you don't need to have that little notched piece. You could just have a square. Just pop a little bit of hot glue on there. And I'm just putting them on just towards the ends of these pieces. Just a nice bit of decoration. It looks like a little bit of like hardware that you would get. I know some of you have got some like real rivets and things like that, you know, from when we've done like the handbag tutorials, you've got real chain, all that kind of stuff. You know, I've got a really 
Um, I've got some really good playlists with like the handbags and I love using the hardware but I just love these little embellishments. I think they work really nice. Add a little bit of sparkle. Okay, so that's them ready. And then you can stick this onto here as well. So again, I'm using my hot glue just for speed. I'm just going to pop a little bit there. It's up to you how far down you come. I'm going to come down about one inch. Keep it nice and straight so you don't want anything to be wonky. Like so. And then with this one. I'm happy with that. I can stick them down separately and I'll stick that down separately. So actually no, I'll use my hot glue to stick these ones on here. So I'm going to add a bit of hot glue there, there and there and I'm going to stick this one about there and then again I would say don't use the hot glue I would say use your normal glue because you don't have the wiggle room as much with this but I'm risking it and then that one is going to go there Yeah, I think I got away with it. Okay, and then we want to stick these down. Um, again, you can still do them last. So you pull this down. It could be, you know, much lower. I'm going to probably have it about there. So it will be a little bit fiddly because this will obviously naturally want to kind of flip up. And also you can't lean on this because you're going to squash your handles. So, and you want to put a small amount of glue because you don't want it oozing and sticking more of this down because that's got to fit through so like I've just there done this is terrible it's too much way too much glue coming out of this let's take some of that off like so once you know where it needs to go take it off and stick it flat so I can see that one can go there and then pop a little bit uh, there. This might be a little bit too fiddly to do, so have a look at the other ones because you know the simple pocket and the Velcro dots, and then all the decoration that you know they do look wonderful, and it's a really nice tutorial. Like I said, I do like to change them up and give you something different each time so now with this one you want to pop a little bit of glue on the top of that piece but on the underside of that one you need a little bit and then this is going to go in like this and I'm going to have it out there that one I've just taken a little bit of the top off but you won't see it once it's inside here and then just kind of curve it a little bit again it would just help you feed it in to that section and I'm just going to use my pokey tool just to start it off that's why you got to be careful with the um, with the glue there, I think because I've reinforced it with the thicker cardstock, this needs to actually be a bit longer. I'm tempted to make them a bit longer because, yeah, it's just going to pull those apart. I'm going to take this off. So yeah, I mean I reinforced it because I was using a very weak card like this but I'm I'm tempted now to just keep it like that it was fine on the other one but this one seems to be a little bit more um, let's just do still the same kind of width but um, it's just a little bit wider and I can see where I've just taken that away so I know where to stick it so just yeah have a little play around and um, you know just make sure it works for you. You wouldn't, you know, notice. These are great, they work, but I think because I've reinforced both pieces, maybe all you need to do is reinforce them, but don't keep these as thick, maybe. I don't know. Like I said, it worked on the other one, but... There we go. Let them dry quickly. 
Okay, so I had a little fight because I could not for the life of me think, why does this one feel like it's not going together like the other one? And then I realized this is a completely different size to this one. I don't know why I cut it to that. So this, I told you, and it's fine, the measurement I gave you because you can have it that size, but this one here for the lid, it's, th it's four by seven. And then I told you to do five by seven. I don't know why. So this is much bigger. You see how far it comes down. Whereas that one there. Look. See the difference. So um, that's why I didn't have so much space here. And I've sorted it all out. I used hot glue. It was much easier just to put a very small amount of hot glue. And, um, and put those together. I think I've gone a bit wonky. But anyway. Just, it sometimes happens, doesn't it? I go to, like that one came together perfectly. And then I go to do a tutorial and I get all these little issues because that side keeps popping out. But um, I'm really pleased with it still. I have got an issue there. I'm gonna have to put some like gems on there or something, you know, we cover it up. But um, anyway, I am gonna finish off some decoration. So I've just die cut this. This is an old stamping up one. I was gonna use these ones here, which are creative expressions, but I do love that one. It's just gonna say celebrate. Like I said, it is an old, I um, don't know, a couple of years ago. And then to make that big like tassel, again, completely optional, but I've just got a piece of scrap here. Um, it's up to you how long you have it. And just cut down. I've got the scissors, the vegetable scissors, but I want the strands even thinner. So I just cut along like so. It's up to you again how much you want to do. So that's what I've got there. So mine is about one and a quarter by four and three quarters. And then if you just curl the top part there, I've probably got that probably too long actually. I'm going to trim that down a little bit. And then I've got some twine here. And then I'm just going to pop a bead of hot glue just in there. Pop that one just in there, just to kind of start it off. And then I'm just going to pop another piece, you know, a couple of bits of glue there, and beads of glue, bits of glue, and just roll it. Obviously be careful if you're using the hot glue. I'm only using it because I'm working against mirrored cardstock. If it was paper then just use a normal liquid glue. But if any of it oozes out of the end it will kind of peel off from the mirrored card so it's quite you know easily disguised okay you see the back there I've got a little bit of glue but I can pick that off but wait till it's dry she says although no that's fine there's a little bit and then you've got your tassel and then you can just kind of you know curl out the bottoms there on some of the pieces just to make it oh, or pull one off completely obviously cut that one a bit fine but you can see there and you've just got a tassel. But if you want to do a few of them, I love making tassels, so I do them all the time. So I've just gone like under that one and then I'm going to... trying to think how I want to do this one, whether I just tie it straight around. Yeah, I'll put the tassel through there and then tie that off that way. Because the tassel is one end of your bow, so you just need to kind of move it around a bit. You can kind of move it around and stuff, but it looks quite nice. And then trim that. So I could put a tassel on the end of that one as well, which you can do, you know, whenever. But there we go. It's just a nice little touch to it. I really, really like it. Like I said, just need to sort that bit out there. But I am happy. I've got there in the end. It just took me a little bit longer. So, um, I mean, it's up to you. You can do 7 by 5 and have it longer. Or that's with the 7 by 4 So, I mean, it's up to you. You know, what what one you want. I, I like both. I guess there isn't one that I'm really swayed to more to you, you know. You just need to decide whether you want more space for decoration or what. But um, yeah, there you have it. So I'm just going to tidy this away. So yeah, a little bit of a fiddliness to the handles. Like I said, you might just decide to do the Velcro dots like I've done on the other ones and the pocket on the bottom. But um, yeah, it isn't hard to do at all. It's just me being yeah just sometimes you do don't you make the simplest things the hardest um i originally had stuck it there and that's actually perfect that's where it needed to be but now because i moved it it's lifted up some of that this side is fine perfect no problems at all so i'm going to have to either 
redo that one. I think I might have a bit of scrap still with that stripe on it. So if you if you don't see that in the photos, then you know it was all right. But um, yeah, I think they're super cute. Love the side detail on these. I think that's what really makes it. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.